Why is this the best composition in the game? Well, let's talk about it. My aim for this video is to be a good developer feedback video. If you want to see gameplay, you can check out my other Mecha Break videos. Let me be clear, I don't want this to be a doomer post about monetization because it is all subject to change. It seems like the developers are actually looking closely at alpha feedback from testers to make changes for the future. With that in mind, I will be putting my little business major hat on. The major meat of this video is a dive on why shield bypass needs to be changed. Then I will compile other feedback points. My overall thesis for this video is that Mecha Break has some elements that prevents it from being cooperative play forward, and it needs to improve its systems to invite better team play for the successful longevity of the game. A main pain point for me in the gameplay was that shield bypass was incredibly strong. There are three types of shields in the game, fluid shields, complex shields, and range shields. Mecha Break's shield bypass mechanic is on six of the nine available strikers. The two snipers have partial fluid shield bypass on their main sniper weapon. This means they can do small bits of damage on their attacks against a target that still has shields. Melee weapons such as the Panther slants bypass shields entirely. This makes melee weapons extremely deadly compared to other damage types that must damage shields first. To put it in RPG terms, melee is essentially true damage, although they cannot bypass complex shields. Complex shields will block everything. Only the Falcon, Tricera, and Inferno do not have the ability to directly damage health. Those three rangers can often top the damage charts, but they have to chew through fluid shields first. This makes their damage less impactful. And thus, the problem stage is set. Rangers are unable to interact with melee, and melee is unable to help rangers. For example, let's take a panther and have him destroy a target. The Panzer deals exclusively melee damage, and then Listness can help the Panzer burst the target harder with their own melee combo. Both melee combos go through shields and help stunlock the target. A Tricera, Falcon, or Inferno cannot help the Panther because they deal exclusively range damage and must burn through the shield first. By the time Tricera brings down the target's shields, the Panzer could have already killed the target solo. In most games, it's normal for melee to have a much faster time to kill than range time to kill. However, the system in place right now creates a weird dynamic where ranger allies of the panther will not be able to assist in shortening time to kill. And panther cannot help half the team by stripping two types of shields even if they're focusing on the target. Directly damaging the health is much more valuable than shooting the shields due to a lack of healing sources in the alpha. This is because shields can recharge passively, and also there are things around the map such as EIC crystal clouds that can replenish fluid shields. Health can only be replenished by Lumine and Tricera as far as I know. A lot of the times, melee fighters can be choosing to use only their melee weapons due to how effective it is versus all targets. The fact is, those without shield bypass has a harder time dealing impactful damage despite their higher DPS. My theoretical ideal team composition would abuse the shield bypass system. This dream team would consist of the Panzer, Alistness, Welkin, Lumine, Narukami, and the Achilles, my beloved. All of these mechas can interact with the health bar when their enemy is at full health, or full shield, really. This effectively means the total health of the enemy team is far less than what is presented. I put my ideas to the test by convincing the other testers in a 6v6 custom match to try this composition. I'm dead though. We dominated that game even if the enemy team accidentally had two Falcons. The Falcons theoretically should counter the three melee and two sniper composition we had due to their higher DPS and flying mobility. 
Yet our team simply had more impactful damage than the enemy team. What shield bypass mechanic does at the moment is that it makes damage at the extreme ends of ranges very good. So think about all of the reverse of a bell curve where the extremes are higher than the middle. You can see in my gameplay videos that my enjoyment of the Achilles and Panther were very high, but Inferno in the mid ranges were less than enjoyable because the Inferno actually had to deal with shields. In the Alpha, we already talked about how melee weapons do more impactful damage and take less time to kill than other weapons. The trade-off of melee weapons is supposed to be that they have a short range. However, due to the mobility aspect of Mecha Break, even an unskilled melee fighter can have a large attack range. Panther already has an extremely large range with his lance, and the other melee fighters are not lacking either. For melee fighters, using a melee attack will boost you towards that target. You can then dash cancel out of the melee boost and then boost again. You can perform the melee boost without lock on as well. So using melee moves for mobility is optimal in some situations. When in the air, melee weapons can also perform a lunging stun attack with a massive range against ground targets. Enemies must use boost to escape from melee combos or the energy bar attacks will be on both sides. Maps are also designed with close quarters in mind. Objectives need point-blank interaction in order to capture. 6v6 maps have more breathing space, but 3v3 maps are essentially just close quarter arenas. All of these factors contribute to melee being a proeminent part of any match you're always going to be in a position to do some melee damage. And the melee damage that you do is very impactful, but also offers no assistance to the rangers. Furthermore, Alistness and Welkin, despite having really strong melee damage, also have a reasonably good range damage kit. Let's take a break from the muscle heads for a second to talk about the dexterity users. I have to ask the question, why do snipers have partial shield bypass? I sort of understand that snipers have only one weapon and the partial shield bypass is to mimic sniper accuracy. However, I saw the trade-off of having true damage from melee was because they had to be very close to the target and potentially suffer blowback in return. Why in God's name does both of the snipers with their incredible damage also have shield bypass? Snipers can finish off targets at extreme ranges without putting themselves in danger like melee fighters. The Achilles is also a good example of something that starts to outperform rangers in mid-range. Despite having higher DPS like I explained earlier, the Falcon, Tricera, and Inferno often enough get outperformed by the Achilles. Why? The Achilles has shield penetration, shield bypass. Melee fighters and snipers can also reliably solo kill someone with ease due to their shield bypass, but rangers typically have to take two to three weapon rotations to do anything impactful. This discrepancy is really big, so I have to ask the question, what was the goal of the system and how do we fix it? This is tricky because designing a game is ultimately about envisioning gameplay interactions within loops. It's not about the numbers game yet. Right now, it's about making a blueprint of how gameplay should look like. I believe the goal with this system was to allow melee combatants to be extremely deadly when catching rangers. In my gameplay videos, you can see that range units melt to melee damage. Most ranged strikers have terrible melee defense and will fold to 1-2 melee combos. In theory, ranger mobility outclasses melee mobility. In theory, melee also needs the true damage in order to take small opportunities to counter aerial targets. However, I believe that in real gameplay, it just means that they ignore a level of HP for all targets. 
I do have a suggestion for a fix, but this will not please everyone. In my opinion, gameplay should not have extreme levels of reliance on shield bypass. My suggestion is that melee weapons should work with partial shield bypass, and snipers should lose their partial shield bypass. Melee should be able to damage both shield and HP with each hit. The rate of bypass should be higher than what the snipers had in the alpha. So more health damage and less shield damage. My reason for suggesting this is to have three benefits. 1. Decreasing melee weapon reliance. 2. Adding more utility to melee fighters. And 3. Increasing team play opportunities. There needs to be a balance where melee fighters still do a lot of damage, but also help rangers in attacking the enemy. The current shield bypass system favors melee only playstyles for the listeners and Welkin. They both have good range tools, but those tools usually take a far back seat for the melee weapons. Using a partial shield bypass system, melee fighters will be forced to use their ranged tools in combination with their melee tools to secure kills. If they want full health damage, they'll have to strip shields first. This will allow team support play from rangers, or the new snipers. With melee weapons actually interacting with shield health, Panzer will be able to help rangers with shield damage going forward. Snipers without partial shield bypass would mean that their full damage should be focused on stripping shields for the rangers. Rangers obviously have more close to mid-range DPS, and thus by decreasing shield bypass availability, it will actually increase balance around the mid-range mechas rather than the extreme close range and the extreme long range. There is one striker that I haven't really talked about regarding shield bypass, and it is Luminae. In my opinion, she's fine being the one to be able to do true damage. Any mecha with low health should fear coming near her, because once she has a lockup and the drones are on you, there is no escape. And I think that is fine for a healer type with low DPS in general. I think that it will be really nice for this support to have some sort of role in the game besides just healer botting everyone else in the roster. I understand that my suggestion would be changing a large significant part of the gameplay. It's not a perfect fix, so I do want counter arguments. And heck, I will introduce my own counter arguments for the sake of fairness. Melee combatants have to suffer lag time when performing strikes that leave them vulnerable to attack. One can argue that the lag time and energy meter required to dash attack enemies would put melee fighters at a disadvantage. However, the bypass damage would not support the idea that melee is anything but optimal. In fact, due to the low amount of mid-range crowd control in the game, melee is both a control tool and a damage tool. One can argue that if melee fighters do not have shield bypass, they'll be weak, and that is a point uh, I've thought about a lot. By introducing only partial shield bypass for melee, a pure melee damage striker like the Panzer would suffer immensely from this change. It wouldn't be able to assassinate some of the things that I can't do now. For example, right now the Panzer can full charge lance the Alistness unarmored form. Maybe with the changes that I had in mind, it wouldn't be able to do that anymore because it will still have to hit the shield. That is a problem that will need more numbers tweaking to fix. However, I think my suggestion covers a broader system and alleviates more pain points than it creates. I definitely seen support for buffing ranged weapon damage over nerfing melee. However, the problem with that is power creep and numbers blow. We wouldn't want that in a game that hasn't even really released yet, and if you've ever seen League of Legends, you would know that power creep is a serious problem. Wrapping up my thoughts on the bypass system, I think 
that the less mechas have shield penetration, the better. From a longevity standpoint, it is very weird for 6 out of 9 strikers in the alpha to have some sort of shield bypass while the other 3 does not. It sets a bad precedence for future strikers that, you know, you either have shield bypass and be good or don't have shield bypass and be uh, non-competitive, let's just say. I'll be doing a simple SWAN analysis for the alpha here. The game's strength are that its core gameplay is good, really good. The maps are varied, the controls are responsive, and there's nothing quite like this on the market at the moment due to the fall of Gundam Evolution and Armor Core 6's lackluster multiplayer aspect. The game has good presentation. The visuals are top notch so far with good lighting, effects, and textures. The designs feel familiar but new at the same time. I appreciate that they stayed with the fantasy of the bipedal mecha. It is impressive then how this alpha was only around 11 gigabytes of space. There are a lot of quality of life aspects that just make sense, such as a kill cam replay, MVP system, personalized end screens, and etc. Also, EIC is just Tiberium, and I love Command and Conquer lore, so I can't wait to see what they come up with for a story. I actually appreciate the fact that pilot characters in the game are, well, characters, or else it will be very soulless like Gundam Evolution. You too can make a custom waifu by going through a rather extensive character customization. Playing off of these frames is a must in order to position Mecha Break as the Mecha multiplayer game on the market. The weakness of the alpha is that it suffers from a lack of playstyles. Other hero shooters will launch with more gameplay style variety. There's currently only one true support and one true tank on the roster. I feel that for a proper launch, you'll probably need to deform more strikers on the roster to have a multiplayer scene capable of supporting multiple team compositions. The alpha also suffered from lackluster sound design. If you reference my Panzer gameplay, the Lance multi-hit sound is very high-pitched and doesn't sound very good when rapidly repeated. Audio warning phrases are also too long and played too often. It's very distracting. Another weakness is the progression system. Without diving into it too much, since the developer still might change it, progression is slow and it feels unrewarding. A multiplayer game cannot take hours of progression just to be able to play with friends. The opportunities of the alpha are, well, tremendous. There's a really solid foundation here to build upon. Gameplay-wise, more maps and mechas are a must. There are alternative ways to monetize besides locking playstyles. More often than not, players are willing to pay for new designs, decals, skins, and etc. The important thing here is learning from the mistakes of Gundam Evolution. Players that drop $100 and never come back after the first month are not as valuable as the player that spends $10 every week and play with their friends. A multiplayer game especially, well, it needs a lot of numbers and it needs community. There's a lot of homeless mecha fans to draw on right now, however, keep in mind that these fans have been very disappointed recently and need a stable, reassuring game to invest in. The threats of this game is, of course, any other multiplayer game with less investment required to have fun with friends. The live service models games are constantly competing with each other for attention. Big friend groups are always looking for new games to invest in, and Mecha Break has to compete with not only free-to-play games, multiplayer RPG games like Monster Hunter, but also other Mecha games as well. The threat to any live service game is the launch state, especially for new IPs. Few games can bounce back from a bad launch like Final Fantasy XIV did. A big part of what makes a live service game survive with some longevity is an active community. Micah Break must be able to capture old fans and invite new friends if seeking long-term success. Alright, this is the last part, I swear. 8 shotgun feedback points about the game. 1. With only 9 strikers in the alpha, it really puts the mecha selection system in a spotlight. 
The alpha system disincentivizes players from teaming up with friends. When you don't all have different mechas, you basically can't play at all. You simply cannot even start to queue. This is very frustrating and anti-cooperative play. Even for solo play, you are not guaranteed the mecha that you pick for the lobby because somebody else on your team might only have that one mecha and nothing else. This problem was only alleviated on the last day of the alpha test where they gave access to all strikers. Let me be clear, I support the final day version of the alpha because it greatly relieved all of the pain points other testers were complaining about. If you want people to like playing this game with their friends, cooperative play must be a priority and that means strikers should not be locked under any kind of currency. Number two, kills going to the person who last hits the mecha instead of the person who deals the most damage to the mecha feels really bad for player gameplay feedback. This is because kills were linked to the missions in the alpha. This system puts teammates against each other for the kill count assuming they are trying to complete missions. The time to kill in mecha break is long, so if you did 99% of the damage and your sniper takes that last 1%, the kill count will go to your teammate. That feels really bad, and also you wouldn't get the kill count for your mission, which your missions give you credits to unlock new mechas. And that, that is frustrating. Number three, audio warnings for lock-ons are very distracting because they're too long. The phrases should be shortened to enemy multi-lock, enemy rear lock, or missile, missile. Something short and sweet. Number four, while can flashbang shouldn't flashbang the person in real life? This is for the sake of real life players' eyes. Please do not let people have so much power against people who play in the dark. Disabling targeting for your mecha is probably good enough for a gameplay effect for the Welkin flashbang. Number 5. We need a library to replay cinematics because they're honestly very cool and well done. The mecha animation is top notch and we need a sort of replay system to be able to view all of them again. A mecha photo studio feature will be cool as well, but honestly not a priority. Number 6. The mod system was very interesting. Like I said about what a good mecha game needs, personal modifications are important for a feel of a mecha. There's a lot of utility mods in the alpha that made customizing pretty interesting. As long as damage numbers aren't being fiddled with, mods are great for gameplay. That being said, statistics are very confusing at the moment. Players need better indications on what mods actually do. It would be nice to be able to turn numbers on and off for casual versus competitive players, but honestly, having those numbers are just really important for everyone. And finally, number eight, we didn't get much lore in the alpha, but please, for the love of God, give us more story. Mecha fans really like story, and we really like lore. We'd love to see more of the world, and we probably will need to see more of the story before we really get invested in the players. And we'll probably need to see more of the story before we get invested in the pilots as well. This has been my in-depth feedback for the Mecha Break Alpha. It's been a very good game so far, so please continue to do great work. It's been a pleasure testing the game. If you enjoyed this video, please do the same that YouTube wants you to do. And as for me, I'm gonna get some water, touch some grass, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.